Roses for Mama by Jeanette Oak. Chapter 12 Sunday Angela felt agitated as she prepared for church on Sunday morning. She should have been elated, relieved, as Thomas was, for the harvest was in the bins, and the crops had done well. Thomas was set to relax and be thankful. The family would have their needs met for another year. Angela was thankful, too. It was a relief to know that she could now shop for the needed materials from which to sew winter garments. It was wonderful that they would be able to get new footwear for each family member. With Thanksgiving, she would buy the wool for mittens and heavy socks. But even though Angela knew she should be humming a tune of praise, she fidgeted and fiddled and felt her nerves strung tight. She had told no one of her invitation to the young Stratton for the Sunday dinner, not even Thomas. Mr. Stratton probably won't be at church anyway, she told herself, and I did rather make that the stipulation. But just in case, Angela had two young roosters prepared and in the roasting pan, and the table was set with Mama's good china. I see we are celebrating, said Thomas, and when Angela nodded her head, he smiled. Angela was sure that Thomas felt it quite appropriate to celebrate. If he should happen to come, and I'm sure he won't, Angela reminded herself, I will not act like a smitten young adolescent. I will act like the young woman Mama would expect me to be. Angela took a bit more time with her grooming, and when she finally appeared and announced that she was ready, the rest of the family was waiting for her. Zane's birthday gift looks nice for that dress, said Thomas approvingly as they walked out to the wagon. Angela nodded in agreement, wondering about his rather knowing smile. It was not a long drive to church, and soon they joined the others gathering for the service. The Merrifield brothers joined their little procession into the church, and Angela feared they were going to try to crowd in the pew beside her. With a bit of maneuvering, she managed to place herself between Sarah and Louise, and she smiled a polite greeting to the two young men as they passed on by. The Andrews family was across the aisle. Angela waved a hand as discreetly as possible to signal that the lovely cameo was resting against the bodice of her pale blue calico. Mrs. Andrews smiled, and Thane looked pleased. Angela turned her attention back to the Sunday congregation. Trudy came in with a rustle of skirts and a flip of her red hair, and seated herself directly in front of the Petersons. She turned to say hello to Angela and to give Thomas a cute smile. Angela again reminded herself that she would not encourage such a manner. The service was about to start when Trudy turned and whispered to Angela, Look, over there. Angela stole a glance to the side indicated by Trudy's bobbing head, and there was the young Mr. Stratton, planted firmly in her church pew. At Angela's glance, he nodded his head slightly, and she felt her face flush. She turned her full attention back to the front of the church, relieved that Pastor Merrifield was taking his place behind the pulpit. Perhaps Angela could have concentrated better on the morning service, had not Trudy been so restless. Angela caught her stealing frequent glances in the direction of the young visitor. She seemed to have forgotten Trudy totally. So that's how fickle you are, Trudy Summers, Angela said to herself. Then she felt anger sitting within her. Well, if you think you can just throw Thomas aside because you have discovered a fascinating new face, you are wrong. If I have anything to do with it, Mr. Stratton will not so much as give you a good morning. Angela decided then and there that she might do just a bit of flirting after all, if it would stop Trudy from claiming the attention of the young man. From then on, Angela had a hard time paying attention to the morning worship service. She chided herself, forcing her thoughts back to what Pastor Mayfield was saying. But at another glance and toss of the red head in front of her, she would lose the train of the message again. As soon as the service ended, Trudy was at her side. Did you see him? Did you see him? I wonder who he is. You mean you don't know? asked Angela. As though she had known the young man for years. Do you? Do you know him? Trudy was shaking Angela's arm as she asked the question. He's our neighbor, Angela answered matter of factly. You're what? Mr. Stratton, replied Angela, straightening the sleeve that Trudy had been tugging. Mr. Stratton? That's not him. I know Mr. Stratton. You mean the son? The young man is Stratton's son? Trudy was shrieking her whisper into Angela's ear. What's his name? Oh, what's his name? Trudy demanded. Angela suddenly realized she didn't know, but she wouldn't have admitted it for anything. I choose to address him as Mr. Stratton, she answered. Oh, you must introduce me. You simply must. Trudy gushed. Angela stood and nodded to her sisters to follow them to exit the church. Very well, she said to Trudy as they walked down the aisle. I'll introduce you if you wish. She hoped that by the time they reached the church steps, the young man would have disappeared. 
but he was making the rounds of the young men, being introduced by Thane. Thane had met the young Stratton on more than one occasion when he came to purchase items from the store. It seemed that the young men of the church were giving the visitor a warm welcome. As Angela moved down the walk, the young man lifted his hat and stepped forward. Good morning, Miss Peterson, he said politely with a dip of his head. Angela again noticed the deep, cultured voice. Good morning, Mr. Stratton, she responded, almost shyly. Feeling Trudy tug her sleeve, an impishness possessed her. I trust you can find your way to our dinner table with no difficulty. We are looking forward to having you. And she gave the young man a warm smile, almost as coy as Trudy would have given. There was a gasp beside her, and then Trudy gave another yank on Angela's sleeve. And before my friend tears my sleeve from my dress, she went on, let me introduce you. This is Miss Trudy Saunders. I believe she would like to meet you. Trudy's red face did not keep her from stepping forward and taking the young man's extended hand. Mr. Stratton bid her good morning. Then he turned his attention back to Angela. May I drive you home, Miss Peterson? he asked, and Angela felt her own face flush slightly. She had not even told Thomas they would be having a guest, and now she was proposing that she ride with him instead of the family. But Trudy was standing by, her mouth open and her eyes wide with wonder. I'd like him, Angela responded. Just give me a minute to inform my brother. And she hastened off to find Thomas. Thomas was talking with Fane. Angela burst in upon them and blurted out her mission. Thomas, she said breathlessly, I, I've gotten myself in a rather strange situation. I invited Mr. Stratton to dinner if he came to church first and he is here. He has, has asked me to ride with him, so I will see you back at the house. Angela turned quickly without reading the two faces before her. She feared that Trudy, if left too long, might turn the tables on the day's plans. The dinner went well enough. Thomas was courteous to their guest and spoke with him easily. Angela learned more about the young man from listening to their conversation. He had been raised in Atlanta, his mother's hometown. In fact, he was reared in the same house that his mother had been. He had no aunts or uncles, but he did have grandparents. It sounded to Angela as if they doted on the boy. How did they feel about your coming west? asked Thomas. They weren't very happy. And your mother? I'm not sure my mother still claims me, he answered candidly. Then why did you come? I had to. I had heard so many little remarks about my father over the years that I had to come and see for myself if he, if he was as they described him. And is he? I don't know. I've been trying to piece things together. I think that many things might be accurate, but I may never know. I still don't really know the man. Angela felt it was a shame that his coming had been delayed until it was too late for both of them. Will your mother join you? Oh, no, she hated it out here. She would never come back. Angela moved out of earshot. She felt like an eavesdropper in her own home. There were better ways to get to know her guest. She would wait until he volunteered the information to her. She did discover his name. It happened as he as she <clears throat> She did discover his name. It happened as she served the coffee. Do you take cream or sugar, Mr. Stratton? She asked. Please, please, call me Carter, he quickly replied. All of you, and I will call you Thomas, if I may, he added, asking permission from Thomas with his eyes. Thomas nodded, and from then on they referred to their guest as Carter. It was a pleasant afternoon. Without Trudy hovering near, Angela was able to keep her resolve of not being foolishly flirty with the young man. She acted as a proper hostess, caring for her guest and family. When he prepared to go, Carter found a few moments with her alone. Will you walk me to my carriage? he asked, and Angela realized it was the first time she had heard the conveyance referred to as a carriage. But then, perhaps his buggy was a carriage. It was certainly fancier than any other vehicle about. She fell into step beside him and accompanied him to the hitching. This has been delightful, he assured her. You are a much better cook than Gus. He teased, and when Angela smiled, he looked pleased. May I come again? he asked. When Angela's brow began to crease, he hurried on. I know it doesn't look proper to call when my father is near death. His candor surprised Angela. But we are neighbors, and I do enjoy your brother and, and the others, and I would honestly like the pleasure of your company again. May I? Perhaps, as a neighbor and friend, dropping in, said Angela but not as a gentleman caller at the present. I understand, he said softly, and he tipped his hat and bid him good day. Angela did not wait to see him go. She turned back to the house and her kitchen. 
The days were getting cooler, she noticed. It was a good thing Thomas had all of the crop in the bins. Any day now, they might be surprised by snow. Trudy showed up on the doorstep the next day. Angela thought at first that it might be to try to make amends to Thomas for so thoroughly ignoring him the day before, but Trudy was still full of questions about Mr. Stack. Does he plan to live here? she asked. I believe so, Angela replied. Oh, just think of it, crowed Trudy. Every girl in the neighborhood will be after him, and I saw him first. Angela wondered how Trudy came to that conclusion. She was the one who had introduced him. I think I'll have another party, bubbled Trudy. I wonder what he likes to do. He says he likes the stage and operas, said Angela, challenging Trudy to match that with her backyard parties. Ooh, sighed Trudy, ecstatically, undaunted. He is so, so sophisticated. I just love it. Angela was glad when Trudy rose to leave. Her friend was almost to the door before she called back, Oh, I came to see what you are wearing to the wedding on Saturday. I think I will wear my lavender sack. Angela knew the dress. It was a lovely, full-skirted gown with generous amounts of ribbons and lace. Angela had always felt that it was not a good color choice for a person with red hair. I don't know, answered Angela. She had almost forgotten that Saturday was the day Hazel Conray had chosen for her wedding. She hadn't even thought ahead to what she, or any other member of the family, would wear. But she knew they would all be expected to be there. I heard Hazel invite Mr. Stratton, explained Trudy, and he said he would be delighted to attend. Then Trudy was gone, tossing her head and smiling. As soon as Angela had finished the morning washing, she cast a furtive look at the lowering sky and headed for the barn to find Thomas. Thomas, she asked, do you mind if I drive over to Carson? Today? he questioned. Right now. I had forgotten about Hazel's wedding on Saturday, and they have a bigger yard goods st store for the back. I'd forgotten about Hazel's wedding on Saturday, and they have a bigger yard goods store there. I thought I could do my purchasing for the winter things we need, too. It's rather late in the day to be heading for Carson. I'll hurry. I'll have lots of time to catch the store. When the kids get home, you can put them to their chore. Then she quickly amended her words. No, you won't need to do that. They know what they are to do. Angela ran back to the house to prepare for the trip while Thomas hitched the horse to the light button. 